welcome back. Last time we started um branching paths and we're going to we're going to do more with branching paths, but follow me on a journey. I think we need a visual. Right now we've got at least the first two thirds really of this diagram rolling in our game. We've got a bus stop and we can go to Margie, Jenny, or Taylor. If you've played a dating sim, you've probably been put up on the idea that like in the background the game calculates how many points margie likes you for how many points jenny likes you for and how many points taylor likes you for and then that gives you an ending based on who likes you the most and so you could get margie's ending you could get jenny's ending and you could get taylor's ending right so we're gonna set up we're just gonna be friends we're not gonna date <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to set up that system similarly today. What we need the game to do is total up all of our Margie points, all of our Jenny points, and all of our Taylor points. We're going to have to do that through Godot. Dialogic does not do that natively. So think to yourself right now. Call it out on the screen like your door of the Explorer. If you need Godot to do something for you, what's the quick, fast, dirty, and easy way to get it to do it? Yeah, buddy, we're going to use signals. All right, come into Godot with me. Last time, we set up a path for Jenny, a path for Margie, and a path for Taylor. At the end of each of these paths, I want Godot to start, like, tallying stuff for us. And we're going to have to signal from Dialogic out to Godot, like, hey, do math. That's what we're going to have to do. So let's look at the signal. If I come over here, I'm in Taylor's. It won't really matter because we're going to do this. I click signal. Emit dialogic signal with argument something something argument type string. Dialogic really only emits two signals. It does emit one when the timeline is over. And it just emits this generic dialogic signal when you tell it to. Unfortunately, through all my research, I was not able to figure out how to get Dialogic to emit a custom signal. We're going to keep this as a string, and we're going to make this argument carry the string go to end. And I'm going to spell it right, too. We've got this at the end of Taylor's. Let's come to the end of Margie's and give her a signal. Same deal. Go to end. I guess I could copy that, couldn't I? Jenny, same ordeal. Go to end. Got it. If you saw um, the diagram, we really only have like one branching path and then we go to the ending. If you've got several spots in your game, I would put this right before the end. Dialogic is throwing the signal out. We have to connect to it. Remember our main node over here in... You know, the Godot, the game engine you've been waiting for. We've got one script. Click on it. Open it up. To connect. We have to talk to Dialogic. We have to talk to its signal event. And we have to connect to it. It wants a callable, meaning it wants to know the function that it needs to run when Dialogic emits that. I'm just going to say on... Signal. Sorry, I don't have a better name for it, but that's fine. Just to prove that I'm right and this is working. This is all we're going to do. Funk on signal. And remember, Dialogic is passing in this argument. So we're going to take it and we're just going to call it signal passed in. What did the signal pass in? We're going to do a match statement, which is going to feel a little ridiculous for this really tiny project. But in your project, you might have multiple signals. So if you've got a bunch, this is a good design pattern for you. So match the signal that's passed in. We really only have the one. It's a string, so it has to be in quotes. Go to end. Put a colon at the end of it. For right now, print. We did it. Spell it right. I said, there we go. 
save. Yeah, I can click the clapboard. That's probably legal. Whoa, who are we hanging out with? There's Taylor. Hey, Taylor. And it prints, we did it. Does it do it at the end of every one of them? Did I get it that right? Oops, did I accidentally click Jenny? Oh, I'll just click Jenny. It doesn't matter. We did it. Now let's do Margie. Yep, okay. They all three print. If your visual novel's small and you wind up really only using a few of these, then that's fine. If you have a really large visual novel, you will go clinically insane if you've got like 20 of these little um, signals in your match case. What I would do if you have a really large visual novel, add child node, regular old node. And this can handle however you've got it divided up is great. Let's say this is chapter one. And you'd put a little script on him. And it would look stunningly similar to this. You would have to connect to dialogic signal event, and then whatever events chapter one passes in would be handled by this node only. And then chapter two, why would that be a child of me? that's quite ridiculous. On and on. Now, if I continued and I did this whole thing in one script, would it run? Yes. Would it run well? Actually, probably yes. This is more a way to keep yourself organized and not have to scroll through 250,000 lines of code. I I don't like giving homework, but I'm going to give homework. Let me delete these out so that you and I don't get confused with each other. Go into Dialogic. Before the next tutorial, I want you to make a timeline for each girl... And make their ending. And you can make it whatever you want. You already know how to make timelines. So I'm not going to really worry about doing this on camera. Just to kind of respect your time a little bit. You go ahead and get cracking on that. And otherwise, take it easy. Take care of yourself. And I will see you next time. Hey, real quick before you scoot, I am on buymeacoffee.com. It's kind of like Ko-Fi and Patreon together. If you found this video helpful or useful, I would appreciate you coming over here and checking this out. If you are willing or able, you can donate on this page.